Dark money, super PACs, shady multimillionaires buying up democracy. When Americans were asked recently what they fear most, it wasn't terrorists, unless you mean the sort that take over your TV at election time, it was corruption. It's that fear that a certain multimillionaire megalomaniac is playing into when he says, I'm so rich I can't be bought, so vote for me. But is voting for a billionaire to protect you from rule by billionaires a sensible way to fight money in politics? Not exactly. It just looks that way on television because we see so little else. Is today's election auction normal or inevitable? Neither. A handful of Supreme Court decisions decided by a single vote, five to four, unloosed this particular cash flow. It's happened mostly over the last decade. As the Brennan Center reported this January, just one justice shifting opinion could speedily restore some common sense. Change won't come easily. In the last quarter century, the share of political contributions traceable to the top hundredth of Americans has doubled from 15 percent to 30 percent. Excess corporate cash rushes into every congressional and state house office in the land. Clearly, concentration of wealth is the problem. Corruption is the consequence. But it's just not true that there's nothing regular Americans can do. Reformers in California are gathering signatures right now to put a voter's bill of rights on the ballot next November. That would require TV ads to display their top donors, clearly enough that you can read it, and overhaul the state's campaign finance database to make tracking special interests easier. California's measure could send a message, even to justices. Similar efforts are underway in Maine and Washington and South Dakota. But paying more attention to people making change would require media to change. They might have to pay just a little less attention to that billionaire. So tell me what you think. Write to laura at lauraflanders.com. And thanks.